Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this morning. Got a great show lined up, a special guest here this morning. But first, let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and a hardworking crew up there in Southport taking care of uh, everyday comfort needs. High today, folks, is 82, low 69. But check this out. Water temperature, boom, 77 degrees. I had to look at it twice. It's 77. I thought it was a misprint. That's high as it's been all year. So that warm current has come in, and the kings will be coming soon. Right? I mean, we talked about that on the Friday show, but uh, they're right around the corner. So Pompano's been doing good. Uh, the mahi bite has been good. And, and the, this, remember, the full moon is May 16th. I know you got a circle on your calendar, so we'll talk about that all week long and all next week about the full moon of May. All right, a river reading is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Take a look at Apalachicola, Blunstown, 9.4, and it's sort of up and down like a little roller coaster, but it's in decent shape. It's not quite where we want it for some good fishing. The Choctahatchee Caraville this morning is reading a 5.5, and it's steady. It's been steady for the last couple of days and not a lot of movement with the Choctahatchee River. Our tide chart brought to us by Kenton Forest Lawn. Today is May 3rd, high tide at 10.57 this morning, going out all afternoon about 10.15 tonight. And guess what? Our wind direction is coming out of south, but is it in double figures again today? Yes, at about 11 miles an hour. Okay, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks, and look who's here. Uh, no stranger to, Pan to Panhandle Outdoors, one of my former students, he hasn't been on a while, Andy Cobb. Hey, Coach, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Oh, we're so Glad to be back, man. We're this so is glad. great. You know, we, we've been talking about it, you know, all the old times and all, and uh, been with the Forest Reserve. How long have you been with them now? Uh, with the, I did more in the, in the private sector before, but I've been with the state for almost 14 years now. Wow. Yep. So you've been around the woods your whole life. Oh yeah, and yeah. Ever since I was, I mean, it's, it's all been, I can remember. It's, it's just been your vocation. It's been life, yeah. And we have a guest with us. And she's coming on the show next time, but she's observing and all. But we're going to. Uh, you were telling her about the outdoor class, real quick about that. You oh yeah. So you know, everybody. I'm kind of giving away my age here. The '90s were great. Yeah. I'm a class of '95, and and you know, in '95, there were two defining things to the 90s, and especially in 95. So you had you had grunge music. I don't know if you, you know, grunge, grunge music, and you had um, outdoor education. When it, is, when it began was in 94. You were directly responsible for one of those. Hey. I'm gonna let the viewers figure that out on their own. Uh, okay, so, okay, so let's figure it out. <laughs> but, boy, Andy was a great student. That was a great class in there, and I really enjoyed having that. God, that was, that was a great class. That's, that's one of the best classes <laughs> ever. It, it was so much fun. fun. And look, it made a career out of the outdoors. I did. That's, that's the special I have. Thing I really have. So good. So, okay, now, uh, so you, you, I know you've been doing a lot of outdoor stuff. We're going to talk about some fishing you did later. Mm -hmm. But let's get, uh, as a forest reserve service, you know, you haven't been able to come on the show. We had the hurricane, then we had COVID. Yeah. Finally, you're back. And, and so what's going on with the forest reserve service? And, of course, I know we had a big, big wildfires and all. So what else is going on? Well, um, you know, we're, we continue to try to work with, uh, landowners, mm -hmm. homeowners to try to get um, to deal with this hurricane blowdown. You know, we had, um, <coughs> excuse me, about 2.8 million acres of, of downed trees that we're dealing mm -hmm. with. And we're still, you know, we're still directly working with, um, with uh, homeowners and yeah. The landowners. Well, you sent me some pictures, and, and we're going to, this is, we've got a series of pictures, and, and this isn't going to look all too familiar with our viewers. And uh, I know when, when, <coughs> when the fire hit, we were out of town, and, you know, we got word, and people calling us, and, and there were fires all over the place. It seemed like, it seemed like the old panhandle was on fire. I, I had to evacuate. So, you did? Have I did. I had to, my wife had to evacuate, oh, yeah, on a no. fire that I was actually uh, working on. So. <laughs> I didn't know the fireman had to evacuate, too. Yeah, we, so. yeah, it, yeah, I, I, that's. Uh, so, well, you know, when I, I often thought, since this, you know, since this occurred, I was thinking about you guys, I know some of y'all, and, 
And, you know, as, when it started, I guess y'all thought it might have been a routine and all, like all fires, but then all of a sudden it just took off, didn't it? Yeah, you, you try to never go into one thinking it's routine. Yeah. But uh, but the weather and the conditions, and, you know, this is something that is not unexpected. Uh -huh. We've known that something like this was extremely possible because of the hurricane. Yeah. And, you know, the whole time, what Hurricane Michael did pr before uh, Michael, mm -hmm. There was no fuel model in the world like this that existed okay. with the blowdown. So it's been very challenging and it's something that we've worked very hard to mitigate and train for and prepare for yeah. as best we can. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't have any injuries on these fires and uh, no, no loss of equipment or life. Uh, so it kind of speaks volumes to our preparation effort, so to speak. Well, uh, you know, I, we kept following it. I was out of town. I came back into town, uh, and but it, it was it lasted a little, a little bit longer than we had anticipated, didn't it? Well, I tell you, I'm glad we got some rain when we did. Wow. You know, the uh, one thing about this fire, so it's about 34, the, the Bertha Swamp Forest, about roughly 34,000 acres. Mm -hmm. Now, 34,000 acres sounds like a lot, but to put this into perspective, that is an area the size of Panama City and Lynn Haven combined, you know, around 53 square miles. So if you think about all of Panama City, all of Lynn Haven mm -hmm. on fire, that's that's what we were dealing with there. Boom. Uh, and, it, you know, the equipment, y'all have been so good with keeping up the modern equipment and practicing and all. So I, I, <coughs> I had all the confidence in the world y'all going to get there and then start on it. But oh. some things... Nature, we can't control nature. <laughs> no, that, that low uh, humidity in the 20s and 30 percent and the double-digit winds every boom, single boom, day. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll have some great, cool pictures. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Andy Cobb. All right, well, welcome back, folks. We're here with Andy Cobb, uh, one of our very early outdoor students. He's made a career out of the outdoors. Uh, in the forestry service. Now, you went down to Lake City, let's say when you left, uh, how did you get into the forestry service? Well, you know, uh, I've been around, it's kind of a family business, and then, you know, I've been around wildland fire since, you know, I can remember doing control burning uh, with, with some of my family when I was 14 years old. Yeah. And, and back then. Uh, so it, it just kind of yeah. something I ended up in. I really liked yeah. it, I liked the wildland fire part of it. Uh, and, and that's just something yeah. I really fell in love with. He want to talk about love. Andrew was a fine football player back in the day. <laughs> he really was. He looks like a football player, don't he? And uh, grew up up there off Bear Creek and, mm -hmm. and yep, yep. 231 and all. Okay, let's get to some of these pictures and all. We, we can't control uh, once it gets started, okay, what the wind's going to do. Okay, so let's talk about this first picture here. Uh, what we got here? So you have... Uh, some Florida Forest Service dozers, which I literally cannot say enough about. These guys are, you know, we're at the, the flame front from the beginning to the end, uh, yeah. working a fuel model that just didn't exist, you know, a few years back. But they're trying to contain a spot right there that has spotted out of a larger fire way ahead okay. uh, and trying to really suppress it by getting the five dozers on it. Okay. Okay, wow. so you can see there kind of what we do here. Uh, you can see the fire lines constructed ahead of the fire that was advancing toward the, the homes. Oh yeah, and you can see kind of where it uh, where it ran into that line. You know that keeps it uh, that fire line. You know just kept it from going right down through the the middle of that neighborhood. Well, that's there. a classic drawing right there. I mean, uh, I mean this is how you, I guess it would be a textbook if you're doing a class. On how to protect the home. Yeah, then yeah. You use this picture right here. Yep, yep. Let's say that is great. Okay, and then this one. Uh, wow. This, yeah, that was a spot over, I believe, on the Bertha Swamp fire that was burning, and I think it got into those smaller pines there. Yeah. And and burned some of those. Wow. All right, then. Uh, so that is the Atkins Road fire. Um, and, and they're trying to push through and connect uh, that left flank of that fire there. And it was really, really boggy going through that drain. Okay. So they were taking their time and, and, and working through 
uh, to try to tie the line in together that was protecting those houses. That way it couldn't you know, creep around and get some of this other fuel and make another run. Wow. Okay. So that's another kind of textbook thing. Um, wow. So we, we put the line in there uh, and that stopped the forward progress of the fire. The house uh, on the probably the lower left part of your screen there, you know, it kind of got up in the yards oh, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the, the structure guys that were doing the structure protection that were stationed, you know, behind these houses, uh, you know, if it jumps our fire line, then they, uh, they're kind of uh, there to spray in, in, the, in the grass and stuff like that. It's wow. also a good example of that defensible space we'll talk about that, later. That's just, I can say, great work right there. All right, here's some of you guys. Is yeah. anyone here? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm there, okay. but I'm not there. I'm, I'm, out in the, I'm out in the woods. These, okay. are, these are all the important people above my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> so what are they? What do you think they're talking about right now? Strategy. You know, uh, you have Richard McGee right there. Um, He's he's holding a map, saying, "Hey guys, this is this is what we've got. This is what we need to do." And they're coordinating uh, coordinating a plan with some of these strike team leaders of how to how to proceed that. So day. you got constant communication with the helicopters and and the guys on the ground. Is oh yeah, yeah, air, 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 yeah, the, the air and 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 everybody right there. Okay, what about the, you know? I was often the meteorologist, or they, I know y'all are in contact with them too. So that is a massive column. Look at that. That is actually from the Atkins Road fire, looking back toward the Bertha Swamp fire in Gulf and Calhoun County. Goodness That's great. how big that plume is. It is massive. You know, I've never seen anything like that. I guess yeah, uh, most of y'all uh, were in awe been, been around fires your whole yeah, life. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. Wow. That is an impressive column. And, and again, you said you're talking about the humidity and all. It was such a huge. Factor. Yeah, we yeah the the lower humidity and the double digit winds. It was just every day, mm -hmm. you know, we think we had a handle on it, and then all of a sudden, about 11 o'clock, the humidity would drop and that breeze would pick up, and then it was just off to the races again. And this final picture, wow. Yeah, yeah. This, you know, when I saw this, I said, well, are we in California, or those California fires <laughs> you know, on TV, where they, you know, they don't There's even control. There's just so them. much fuel on the ground, and it yeah. burns so hot. It, it just, you know, you have literally years and years of growth that was placed on the surface, you know, yeah. after Hurricane Michael. Okay. That, uh, that sort of captures, you know, the, the intensity of it and all. Well, uh, how many, how long did it all fight? How many days and weeks? How did it get, do you remember, basically before we sort of felt like it was under control? Uh, you know, even, I can remember even after it rained, being nervous that it was going to dry up and, yeah. and, 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 you know, uh, restart. But I think, uh, I believe I was there monitoring and working that fire for about 14 days. Uh, some of them were there on that on that a little longer, I think, but that is yeah. about two weeks. I know I know y'all called in reinforcements, which all big fires do. Oh so man, we had, we up. had we had reinforcements from um, all over yeah. the state from the Florida Forest Service, as well as uh, multiple uh, resources from like the National Guard mm -hmm. brought in. Um, I think four helicopters. They had two Black Hawks and two Chinooks there. Which wow. are really cool. Yeah. We had two helicopters there. Um, a, a lot of uh, the structure fire departments from from many different areas yeah. also came to assist with the structure protection and and stuff like that. It's uh, so it was really uh, just such a group, uh -huh. a combined effort. Yeah, even FWC was there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in in the Panama City Police. You know, and Bay County Police just. We had so many, so much help from multiple yeah. agencies. And and what and what you were right. What a lot of people don't realize there were a lot of little smaller fires breaking out, and they didn't make the news or anything. But you guys jumped on it over there close to my house off of Daffy Lake Road. Right. They right. jumped on that and made a big cut. I I visually went out there and inspected. I talked about it on the show. What a great job they did. Boom, cutting it out before it started. And oh, it yeah. Just, all kind of little things like that, y'all ready? Oh, we're on it, Coach. We're we're ready, man. We're okay. we are ready. We're gonna come back our second segment. We got some more uh, 
things to talk about as, you know, as actually uh, we have we can prevent it now and some things coming up so we'll be right back after the break okay welcome back appreciate you watching today uh, first of all let's uh don't forget that tent revival up there in, in youngstown uh going up there right there in, in on highway 20 at the fairgrounds there that tent revival we talked about last week cool going on a lot of good things going on get a chance to run by there tonight next couple of nights okay Fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. How about 132 to 332 this morning, this past, this afternoon, 157 to 357. A couple of pictures real quick. We're we'll talking about Andy not all work. He does some play. Tell us real quick about this picture here, Andy Cobb. So, Coach, that is a picture of me being really awesome <laughs> with a fly rod right there. It doesn't happen often, so I've got to make sure I got the camera angle. You got covered. this tarpon on a fly rod. I did. Down in the Keys? I, down in the Keys in Isla Mirada. Yep, Who's sure taking these pictures? That's my brother. I, I had to right. give credit to my brother on that one. All right. And, uh, I took some pictures of him, but it's mostly just my thumb. Check it out. Yep, that was the same fish in the, in the picture. Yep. What a great trip. And we got some video, maybe we'll get to it later and all, but uh, let's get back to our, our forester work and all. You wanted to mention the mitigation. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the fires and everything, you know, fires are bad. Not, you okay. know, uh, an uncontrolled wildfire is bad. Um, and of course, prevention is key, but I'd also, what I really like to touch on is mitigation, mitigating these disasters. Uh, something that's very, very important is to have a defensible space around your home. Clear the brush back, uh, you know, that saves so many homes. I've seen it time and time again where, you know, there's brush right up to a house, mm -hmm. right up against the house, or not very far from the house. When that stuff erupts in the flames, you get a lot of radiant heat damage to your home. It just causes uh, so many, so many problems. Um, and, you know, if, uh, just, just keep it clean. You know, keep the, the yard green. Um, and, and something else. So we have a mitigation specialist. Okay. And they will be happy to meet with you and see if, uh, you know, what they, what we can do, how we can help you, either by advising you about something or maybe offering you into some sort of program to be able to uh, give you a defensible space around your home. So I encourage everybody to just uh, stop by your 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 Florida Forest Service office okay. uh, locally. Every county has one, mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll be glad to uh, help you out or or put you in contact with somebody that, that can help you. I know a lot of us, we, a lot of viewers, and all we talk about it a lot. We still have you know bad. Yeah, bad now, I mean there's or, for everybody in Bay County there is pre-hurricane life yeah. and post-hurricane life yes. that everybody's yeah. still dealing with. On up all the way up through Calhoun yep. County and all and. Uh, it's amazing how the track of that fire followed the hurricane destruction. I mean, you yeah. can just see, yeah. we're talking it, about It that. scarred the landscape. You can still yeah. see it from a satellite. Right. You know, well, a question I always think about, and we we'll talk about it too, what, what do the animals do? And, you know, how do they survive? I know some don't survive, but, you know, as an outdoorsman yourself, you're concerned. And so what do y'all see and, and, and talk about? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked that because, it, you know, when you're talking about fire, you're always kind of giving this bleak outlook or be, be aware of be. But on the bright side of things, so a lot of this that burned, mm -hmm. it's not going to burn again because it burned so clean and so thorough, which really opened up a lot of new habitat for wildlife, uh, turkeys especially. I've, I've been back to some of these areas since the fire and, and the amount of open ground now mm -hmm. where it before looked like a terrible game of pickup sticks and nothing, yeah. it just nothing could use it. Mm -hmm. Now it's clean, you have green grass coming back, green, you know, it actually helps create habitat yeah. for wildlife. And, and uh, you've seen an increase in, in the turkeys? In yes, the yes, uh, to turkeys. Yeah. Or, or really, I mean, after uh, after it rained, I went back you know, probably a week or two after this fire, and there was turkey tracks everywhere. <laughs> you know, they really moved in there and allowed them to get to yeah. stuff on the ground that they normally couldn't get to because there was so much. Wow. So I'm, I'm hearing that kind of same kind yeah. of from other viewers and all. What about a lot of them when when the fires coming? I guess they just sort of hunker down and try. I know they try to board and all, but a lot of some survive and some don't. They have an almost supernatural ability to avoid fire. Wow! That I, I I've seen it time and time again. You know, I've yeah. seen it burn through a a place, and all of a sudden you look out there in the smoke, and there's a deer just kind of standing there. And I'm like. Hey, where did she come from? He that? had to have been there, you know. They they just they really have a ability to get around and find these little pockets where it's not as hot or not burning, 
and, and survive. Okay, and now just regular prescribed burns, you always recommend that, like I say, with big acreage and all. I know the big companies do it also. Yes. Want a, a homeowner and landowner to do that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. If, if, you know, prescribed, prescribed fire is so important. Yeah. It's important not only for, for you know, our protection mm -hmm. and wildlife, but it is, it is such a part of our ecosystem in Florida. Mm -hmm. We have probably one of the most fire dependent ecosystems in the world, because mm -hmm. everything that's native to Florida is is you know really fire dependent. Yeah. The longleaf pine, the wire grass. Yeah. Well, we we would not have had this model if we had not had the hurricane roller down trees. This fire would not have been near as bad if all of no. Trees. And it's interesting no. that it yeah. happened, and that shows because we had prescribed burns throughout Florida that prevented that kind of stuff. Yeah. Whereas places like California and all they they have them all the time because they don't get prescribed burns. Right. I mean it's as simple as that. So. Uh, we, we appreciate all the work y'all do, man, and I was glad wait, to do it. Can't wait as long next time coming on the show. Oh man, I, I, I know. I, I I have so much fun when I'm here. Uh, well, it's always great to catch up with you. It's always special to have you on too, and uh, I know a lot of your former classmates have you know stayed in contact with you. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. So folks, we appreciate you watching. Get a hold of Florida Forest Service. They're here to, to help us. And next show, we're going to bring on their PIO, the Public Information Officer. She's going to be with us and uh, all kind of good things going and on. And she also helps the mitigation. She also does the mitigation. And she can really shed some light on some of these programs and, and what we're able to help people with. That's awesome. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Coach. Good to see you. You too. Folks, appreciate y'all watching Panhandle Outdoors. We appreciate the viewership. You do something good today for fellow man. You have a great day. Enjoy your outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.